Disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely my own and all information is alleged. This video has adult themes, curse words, and discusses coercion related to sex. It may not be suitable for some viewers. View at your own risk. Thank you for visiting my channel. Please like and subscribe to help YouTube share my videos. In this video, we will be looking at Robin's toxic and dangerous ideas about sex, marriage, and parenting. Am I the only one deeply disturbed by Robin's interview with Sukanya? Robin made some pretty concerning statements. He was still romantic with the wives, the OG3, when they got old, fat, and were poor. I paraphrased, so sue me. We all know that is exactly what she meant. She acted like he deserved a medal or something for behaving like a husband. He's my best customer. Um, is she picking up some hours at Victoria's Secret to get an employee discount or something? She makes Cody sound like her job. It is kinda weird to describe your relationship with your spouse in those terms. She essentially just told us her marriage is transactional. It is based on what she has to give to get her needs and wants met. That is not healthy. By far, the most worrisome was her criticism of the wives for rejecting his affection. Because they are uncomfortable, they don't like it. That's not who they are. What the actual fuck? Let's translate her statement into what she meant. Cody wants certain things in the bedroom, i.e. sexually, and the other wives won't do what he wants. We got a lot to unpack here. Where in the hell is she getting the idea your husband decides what you are and are not comfortable with? So I guess women can only say no until they are married? Once married, they give up that, right? Or is this more of her transactional marriage arrangement? She negotiates. Someone needs to tell her women have agency over their own bodies all the time, married or not, and get to decide what they do with it or not do with it. Women do not need to give something to get something. She thinks they are wrong for not just doing whatever he tells them to do. That right there is some keep sweet and obey kind of shit. Thirteen years ago, we were sold a lie. We were told the Browns were one big happy family with slightly modernized traditional Mormon values. The fact the wives worked to help support the family financially and education was valued for both the male and female kids made us have hope for this unusual family. There were no arranged marriages or pressure to marry young. We saw them function as a committee. We saw them act as one large family of three moms and a dad. There was unity and an overall sense the greater good of the family was always prioritized over individual wants and needs. Each wife looked at their children's needs as one cog of the wheel. They saw that all the kids' needs were met as equally as possible. There was equitable distribution of time and resources. No one mother put her children before the children of another mother. That was how it was represented. What we now know is that Mary and her child were favored. Mary did not contribute to the family fund, but was given an equal portion despite having only one child and not contributing at all. We watched her cry and stomp her feet whenever anyone even hints that their stipends be based on family size. She played their emotions to get her way. None of us will forget her breakdown about the wet bar or the Flagstaff rental with an elevator. Cody said she defrauded him. He has never explained what he meant. We would love to know. They went on national TV and said we want to live our lives transparently. We are good people and raising our kids to be good people. We don't support the restrictive and oppressive teachings of the FLDS. We are different. For people who say they are nothing like the FLDS sect, they seem to share some of the values and twisted ideology. We found out from their book that Cody was courting a 17-year-old girl before meeting Robin. 17. 
Keep in mind his oldest child, Logan, was 14 or 15 at the time and Cody was more than twice her age, a 23-year difference. We now know he prescribes to the idea that male children should be kicked out of the home at 18. Was he afraid of competition? There was an inordinate amount of talk of sweet this or sweet that. We saw some girls rewarded for having never been kissed. Isabel was sweet 18 and Cody said that earned her a car. We watched him repeatedly tell his daughters to keep sweet over 17 seasons. So I guess only his girls need to keep sweet, but he has no problem marrying someone else's teenage daughter. We watched as an interloper maneuvered her way to the legal wife position and chip away at the family culture until it crumbled. The destruction of this family can be directly related to Robin joining the family. She looked at this family and decided they were doing polygamy all wrong. This was all baggage from her own childhood. Robin has said that her mother was her father's second wife, but there was no big family holidays and he missed many birthdays and family celebrations because he was with his other family. The two families were kept separate and independent of one another. They lived in different areas. Their only link was her father. Her father had a main wife and then he had Robin's mom, more of a side chick than a wife, and both women had kids fathered by him. They didn't give much explanation of how her stepdad came into her life, but it was clear her father disappointed her. She wasn't going to let Cody do the same. That was not how the Browns wanted to live. They wanted the unity of being one family. She was raised to believe that polygamy was the one and only way to salvation. Robin's views on marriage and sex came from somewhere. One can assume this is how her parents' marriage worked and she saw that the main wife, or wife number one, the legal wife held the most power. She manipulated and maneuvered her way into that position quite quickly. Robin made it clear from the beginning she would be Cody's priority, as would her children, even at the expense of the rest of the family. Once she gave birth to Cody's son, she began using more divisive language, talking about how their assets would be split for their heirs and the like. Robin was the one that decided loyalty, obedience, favor, respect, and patriarchy were key ingredients to a successful polygamous family. Cody completely changed. He went from a pretty-go-lucky, easy-to-get-along-with guy with limited leadership communication and organizational skills to a volatile and downright abusive douchebag who shows no consideration for anyone not related to Robin. She inserted herself where she shouldn't have had a say. She was constantly in his ear subtly suggesting the rest of the family doesn't respect him, that she followed whatever he said and took it as law, that she deserved more because she was his obedient wife. Allegedly, Robin keeps saying they took her dream away. They didn't take anything away from her. They were forced to either go along with her and Cody's new toxic family rules and values or leave. They chose to be emotionally healthy. Those women really tried. They did their best to conform to the new way Cody was managing the families, very separate and very unequal. Her saying all she wanted was one big happy family doesn't really hold water when we saw her subtly manipulate Cody changing long-standing family rules that worked well for them and turning it into something none of them wanted or agreed to. Cody blames COVID for the breakdown of the family. That just is not true. It began the day Cody met Robin. She used COVID as a tool of manipulation. But even before COVID they were operating as four separate entities, separate and unequal, just like she was raised. Robin says Cody wants the soulmate experience with each of his wives. Robin missed the point. Being someone's soulmate isn't role-playing. It is true love. She doesn't understand because she doesn't love him. It's a game to her, allegedly. Cody spent more of everything for her family, more time and more money, and Robin felt she deserved it. She didn't care about the other wives or children. We spent 13 years watching her get the best of everything by playing the victim of every situation, often with fake crying and ridiculous dramatics. Allegedly, 
She can deny it all she wants, but it takes only comparing her million-dollar mansion and Janelle's RV with no electricity or water. Is that not a good enough example? How about Dayton's eye surgery that he got immediately, but Isabel had to wait until she was in constant excruciating pain and still wait even longer for Christine to raise the money before getting her back surgery? Who paid for Dayton's surgery? Why wasn't Christine loaned the money from the family fund? Robin has had a negative effect on Cody since the very beginning. She changed the entire family culture to resemble what she grew up with. Thirteen years ago, he would have moved heaven and earth to be with his daughter for her surgery and recovery. He would have said, where we go one, we go all, and handled the pandemic as a single family unit prioritizing the family culture because back then they were one family. Mary wouldn't have needed to seek out companionship from strangers on the internet. They very likely would have remained in one home with each wife having their own dedicated space and kitchen. He would never have allowed one wife to demand he not be away more than two days. No other wife would do that anyway because they were working together for the good of the family. Cody would still be saying each marriage should be different with its own unique characteristics. That is what he said at the beginning of the show. Now, he says each wife needs to be a carbon copy of Robin. Cody lost sight of the big picture, of their goals. They wanted to be the face of polygamy, living publicly without hiding or shame. They had a common goal in putting the family as a whole before any one member. That was not Robin's goal. Her goals were much, much different, and it showed. Cody has always been a showboat. Very selfish and ego-driven. But he loved his family. Above everything else, he loved them. Slowly, with Robin's influence, he evolved into someone very different. We saw how they were raising their kids, the OG3, and thought it was reasonably healthy and safe. We saw the distinct moment we knew the parenting methods were changing. It was in Vegas when some of the teens balked at signing the family mission statement. Cody initially said that was fine. They can decide for themselves. Robin threw a tantrum and said they had to sign or be kicked out of the family. Cody then backtracked to appease Robin and said they had no choice they must sign it. We saw clearly who was the head of the family and it was not Cody. Then or now. Side note, I still cannot get over his ego. The mission statement couldn't just say the Brown family, oh no, it had to say the Cody Brown family. This man is ridiculous. Don't even get me started on the accompanying ego fest party, he insisted they throw to announce the mission statement to the world. Newsflash Cody, not one person gives a rat's ass about your mission statement. Nor should they. That should have stayed personal to the family. Robin caused the failure of this family. The other wives don't seem to see what we did. Mary was trying to be besties with Robin even as she stood there and lied to her face about Cody being the one that said she could not visit despite quarantining. That filmed conversation between Cody and Robin was very telling. It clearly showed how Robin is able to outsmart and manipulate Cody into thinking everything is his idea making him the bad guy but still benefiting the most from his decisions. Robin is overprotective to the point of coddling, but yet doesn't make her kids use seatbelts, lets her six-year-old still use a pacifier, lets her stay up all night. She certainly doesn't discipline her in any way, but she has no issue with causing her kids emotional harm by telling them the other wives didn't care enough about them to come to Thanksgiving. She purposely neglected to say they wouldn't be back in time to do her required two-week quarantine, so they had no choice. But to go elsewhere, seems Robin is just as good at manipulating her children as she is Cody. Too bad it's actually emotionally abusive. As is returning from the ER and rather than reassure them, say she could still get worse or even die. Who does that? Good parents want to protect their children. We saw her literally induce Aurora into a massive panic attack for ratings. It was so obvious it was deliberate. She is a terrible mother. In my opinion, their six-year-old didn't even make it through the first day of school before the teacher had to call them. She wouldn't leave another child alone, kept getting in her personal space and refused to stop when the teacher asked her to.
when Cody tried to talk to her about it, Robin immediately shut him down. Apparently her princess can do whatever she wants. They are doing that child no favors by allowing her to behave like that. I feel for her teachers. When asked about what happened at school, she went on a tirade about how her friend's man cut her off. It was disturbing. Clearly someone in that home is saying those things, probably about Christine. Cody has always punished his wives when they didn't behave in ways that made him feel like a king. He carried that punishment from the wife to her children as well. Christine spent most of the past 13 years struggling with their marriage. Because of that he refused to go to Isabel's surgery or take her to college. He barely knows truly at all because he was so busy punishing Christine he missed her childhood entirely. He punishes the wives' behavior by withholding affection, refusing to see their kids, and God only knows what other misogynistic bullshit he can come up with, and he thinks that is normal. And Robin cheers him on. This man sat on national TV and said he wished Isabel would hurry up and recover so he can stop feeling guilty for not going with her to her surgery. Worse, he says things like that all the time. I can't blame his lack of self-awareness on Robin, although I do think she encourages it. We have seen 17 seasons of her play the martyr, make everything about her, deflect responsibility fake cry, and lie all while manipulating this entire family. Allegedly, this is the wedding dress incident. She isn't upset in the least. And this is her later saying how Christine's reaction devastated her. If these videos don't prove how fake she is nothing will. What I cannot stand by and watch is Robin spread toxic and dangerous ideas about transactional relationships and coercive sexual relationships being normal and acceptable. It is not okay to teach your kids that. Seeing the values this family i.e. Robin and Cody currently promote I am not upset that they self-destructed in the least. I am sad for Savannah though because she remembers how it used to be and spent the last few of her teenage years without Cody around much. Thanks for supporting my channel. Please like and subscribe to help my videos get traction. Don't forget to leave a comment. More videos coming soon.